Welcome or welcome back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia. Today I have a cozy reading list for you. I love to read seasonally. I love anything in the autumn and winter that makes me want to just curl up and snuggle. I'm going to concentrate on just autumn in this list, but you can read them into winter if you would like to, but I'm choosing these ones because they don't feel specifically winter to me. And so without further ado, I have got, I've got kind of three different types. I've got like middle grade YA, and then I have adult, and then I have nonfiction. So not as many nonfiction as I wish I did, but these are the ones that I could think of and the ones that kind of jumped out at me on my shelf when I was thinking of this. So let's get into it. So should we start with the kids? I think we should start with the kids. So I have a stack. <laughs> um, let's start with one that is probably on several reading lists for this, and that is The Little Prince. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry is the author of The Little Prince, and this is the story of wonder. It's a story of love, and it's a story about how sometimes when we grow up, we forget what's really important. And so that is The Little Prince. And this is one of my favorite editions of it, but it's not like overly illustrated or anything. It's just the normal illustrations that he did originally. So. The Little Prince. Next, next I don't have a copy of this book, so I'll put a picture up, and that is T. King Fisher's A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. And it is a really wonderful kind of storyline where the character learns something. The characters are the young side, and so uh, she's coming into her own and she is learning how to use the gifts that she has in order to help the ones that she loves. And it's a great story. Really funny, really tense at times. I, I just really enjoyed it. I only have a graphic novel of this but it is an actual book, so you could get the book if you would like to. But that is The Iron Giant by Ted Hughes. This is also called The Iron Man. And this was written by Ted Hughes for his children uh, in order for them to understand kind of what had happened to their mother and what to expect from him as a father. And it's just this very precious, precious story about a young boy who finds a kind of alien giant close to his home. And he keeps him for himself because he finds that, that the giant is soon becoming his best friend. And he's a very lonely little boy. And so this, it, it's just beautiful. The whole story is just absolutely wonderful. So this I would highly recommend. Sipping today's tea. Today's tea is a turmeric ginger. And this one includes meadowsweet. It's traditional medicinals. And um, it's supposed to be good for joint support and digestive, but I just drink it because it tastes good. 
So something I tried to do with this list was to choose books that I haven't talked a lot about on my channel. I mentioned The Little Prince in just about every video, so, <laughs> so there are some on this list that I've talked about before, but I tried to get ones that I haven't talked about quite as often. And so hopefully you'll find some that aren't on a bunch of other lists and you'll hear about some that haven't really been spoken about too much on my channel. Uh, the next one is Daddy Long Legs. This is by Jean Webster and this is a classic story written in letters that I really love. So the very beginning is not in letters. We have kind of the setup of the story. And then she, as an orphan, is about ready to be too old to be at the orphanage. And she's sponsored by someone who wants to send her to college. And his only requirement is that she write him letters uh, regularly, I think weekly. And she basically writes him letters almost daily. And she calls him Daddy Longlegs because the only thing she has ever seen of him is his shadow. And he looked very tall and spidery. <laughs> Lark Rise to Candleford. I, I could put this in the adults, but it's about a village and it's mainly about the children of the village. But Lark Rise to Candleford is one of those books that I wish I would have read when I was younger. I wish that this is one of those books that my parents would have read to me when I was growing up. It's set in vignettes and it is just memories of Flora Thompson, the author, growing up. And it's not set as if it's an autobiography. Um, it's, it's told as if she's telling the tale about someone else, but it's just memories and it's Victorian England in the deep countryside and just beautiful writing. So cozy, so precious. I loved it. And like I said, I wish that someone would have read it to me when I was much younger. So I'm recommending that one in the kids category because I want kids to be read too. <laughs> you could probably read any Redwall books that you want to, but I do know that this one is one of the first ones, Redwall. And this is about a young mouse who is feeling a call to be a hero. And he is, he has a lot of work ahead of him to um, become the hero that he wants to be. But he is loving, he is kind, he's generous, he's all of the things that a hero should be. And um, most of the Redwall books take place over several seasons. Uh, I just remember that the season in this one, it opens at the very end of summer. And then this one is Pearls of Lutra. And this one also is uh, kind of the waning days of summer and um, then goes into autumn. And it's, this one is probably one of my favorite, both of these, <laughs> both of these are two of my favorites. Two more that I know are in autumn time uh, are Salamandastrin and also Tagarung. Both of those are also kind of set in the autumn forest. It sets the scene for the season ahead so well. Um, lots of food, lots of animals gathering, bringing things in, storing up 
all of that kind of thing. So Children of the Green, no. So this is a series, but this one is the first one. And this one also opens at the very end of autumn. And so we are getting kind of the rainy season that hits right before winter happens in England. And it's about a young boy who has never met his great grandmother, but his great grandmother owns a house and it is called the Green No. And it is the house that she was born and raised in, that her mother was born and raised in, that her mother was born and raised in. And this is his first time seeing the house, getting to know his great grandmother and getting to know the other children of Green No. And it's so, so cozy and just absolutely wonderful. So highly recommend that. An Old Fashioned Girl. Louisa May Alcott. I think most people, when uh, they think cozy, they think Little Women. Um, this is about Polly, I think, right? Yes, Polly. This is about Polly and she is coming from the countryside to visit town family. And she is not as contemporary as her cousins are. And she feels that very deeply but she also holds that very deeply. And she really has a strong sense of who she is and why she is who she is. And she wants to never let that go. And this is just a really beautiful story of her kind of growing to become a person who is able to say, this is who I am and I know it and I'm going to hang on to that. The Borrowers. <laughs> so this is a book I just recently got and it has all of the Borrower books in it. And so we have, I think there's actually one more that's not in here, but we have The Borrowers, The Borrowers Afield, The Borrowers Afloat, and The Borrowers Aloft. And um, this is the story, the stories of tiny people who live beneath the floorboards and make use of discarded and everyday um, tiny items and just what they are able to build and do and accomplish with those items and the way that they make a home and the way that they dress themselves and just there's so much. It's just a beautiful, <laughs> wonderful imagination galore kind of book. And I, I just, I love these stories. So highly recommend Borrowers. Cozy, cozy read. On to Adult. So the first one I want to mention is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This is the same author as The Memory Police, but a completely different kind of book. I also read another book by Yoko Ogawa that I will talk about in my August wrap up. But this one is about a widowed woman with a son and a professor of mathematics and sciences that has lost his memory due to an accident and only has 80 minutes worth of memory at a time. So the housekeeper is hired by his sister-in-law and she is there to kind of help him remember and 
help him understand. But it is even more about how those that we have compassion and sympathy and empathy for become our chosen family in so many ways. What you are looking for is in the library. This is one that I don't own, so I'll put a picture up. But this is another one that is a series of vignettes. And they are connected, but they're connected by what is in the library. And each of them is going through something in life that is really weighing on them. And so they go to this library and the librarian there is someone who has a gift to be able to know what book to recommend them to read in order to help them to either find an answer, make a move. And she also is a, a creator and she gives them something that she creates each time they bring back a book. And it's pretty special. I just really enjoyed it. I think because it's kind of the interconnected short stories, uh, that it's not as well developed as some of the other books that people recommend that are, you know, library or bookstore. But I think that it it moves at a really good pace and it it's one of those books that uh, you get to the end and you you might wish that you had more, but you're also really thankful for what you got. I read this a few years ago, a couple years ago, and um, it made it to my top books of the year. Whenever I think what makes me happy, what makes me want to curl up with a book and read, I think about this book quite a bit. And that is The Road Past Altamont by Gabrielle Waugh. <laughs> um, this is, again, four interconnected short stories being told by the narrator who is who starts off as a young girl and she is looking back on her life. So it's not a child telling their story. It's her looking back on her life and looking at the women in her life, including herself, and talking about them in these stories that pull together who she became and why she became who she is. And so it starts off with her as a young girl going to visit her grandmother for the first time. Then it jumps to her being a few years older than that and kind of taking a trip for the first time. And then it goes to a story about her grandmother coming to live with her and her mother. And then it goes to her all grown up and coming back to take care of her mother, get to know her mother. It was an amazing look at a life in women and the women who form us. And so I, I loved it. Next is A Gentleman in Moscow. So this is one of the coziest reads I have ever had. This takes place completely in a hotel in Moscow with a man who is under house arrest. And he is a count, but he is everything is stripped from him and he has to learn to survive uh, and how to still be a, a, a gentleman, a pleasant man to those around him that 
aren't so pleasant themselves. And I, I just love this story. It's very slow. You feel like it's a big cozy chair to sit in and find out about our count and a couple of other characters that become quite important. The Elegance of the Hedgehog. This one begins to take place as the weather is turning chilly. And it is about a hotel concierge who is extremely smart, but pretends not to be because that is how the people in her building expect her to be. And she doesn't want to give them any hints as to who she truly is because she wants her privacy and she wants to keep her job. And <laughs> then it's also about a little girl who is in a family, she's also extremely smart. And she's in a family where she's just not appreciated or looked upon um, with favor because she's not as pretty and dainty and girly as her older sister is. And her mother doesn't quite know what to do with her. And the concierge and she form a friendship and it's truly, absolutely wonderful. And they're not the only two, but I'm not gonna go into that. Another one that I think I just read last year, one of my favorite books of the year. This is Cyrano de Bergerac. This is by Edmund Rostand. And this is a play. And I did not expect the emotional impact that this funny, funny play had on me. It's heartwarming. It is so touching. And I absolutely loved it. And if you can find a dramatization, a really good dramatization of it, I would recommend that as well. Because it's, it's meant to be seen or heard. And acted out, dramatized. And I just, I just love it. And I want more people to love it and talk about it. It's wonderful. And this little one is The Vicar of Wakefield by Oliver Goldsmith. And I read this with Stephanie and Tiffany. I was laughing through it all. I was happy. I was sad. I was frustrated. It's just really kind of an amazing little story. I didn't love the ending, but I could forgive it. I could forgive the ending because the rest of the book was absolutely amazing. So I highly recommend this one. It is autumnal. There is harvest. There are farm scenes, all of that kind of thing. Very pastoral. All right, next I have Babette's Feast. This is by Isaac Dennison. This one is, it actually has Karen's name on it. Karen Blixen is her real name, but her pen name is Isaac Dennison. And that is who the one that I read, uh, the copy that I read was by Isaac. So I still say Isaac Dennison, even though this says Karen Blixen on it. Babette's Feast is about a settlement where the two girls in the story, their father is the one that established that religious settlement. And they grow up to be beautiful in different ways, but uh, are very loving and kind and would not move away from this settlement for anything, even after their father passes away. One day they are asked by a friend 
uh, to take in a young woman who is fleeing from uh, Nazi Germany and she is a, a good cook is what their friend tells them. And so they take her in and, and tell her the kinds of foods that they eat and ask her not to prepare any other kind, just what they're used to. And she does it and she does it for many years. And then one year it is like an anniversary of some sort of their father's. I don't know if it's like would have been his, you know, 50th birthday or something. I don't know. But um, they decide that they want to gather together as a community who have been having a little bit of infighting. And they want to gather them together and celebrate their father and remember why uh, their father started the community to begin with. And Babette, the woman that has lived with them for several years now, and that they have come to feel as family, um, wants to cook her own way and cook them a feast to share. And there's more to the story than that, but I'm gonna stop there because uh, everything that happens as a result of this, as a result of, of Babette in general, is just really beautiful. And there's something about sitting around a table of food that, and everybody talking and laughing and singing and all of that, that is just perfect for autumn and perfect for a cozy read. All right, I have Willa Cather's short stories. These are collected stories by Willa Cather. I have not read all of them, but I will tell you that they are amazing. They're beautiful. Willa Cather and the way that she writes her sense of place and then the characters that she develops, I find to be fascinating. And um, there's always a real sense of home with her writings also. And so I just have loved so much of what I have read. And so I would just highly encourage you to pick up some Willa Cather short stories. <laughs> Um, I think that they are perfect for winter autumn kind of season. All right, then I have The Singer Trilogy by Cal Calvin Miller. This is about Singer and it is about his star song and what that song creates three books in one. It is Singer, Song, Finale. And it is actually written in poetry format. So this is an epic poem. And it is very easy to understand. And it is so beautiful and comforting. I highly, highly recommend Calvin Miller's writing, but especially this one. And then we are on to just a few cozy nonfiction books. A Time of Gifts or any of this series, um, but especially this one. And that is partly because of the time of year. And so, Patrick Lee Firmer is somebody that I just discovered last year. This is travel writing. He is on a sort of pilgrimage. This one is on foot to Constantinople from the Hook of Holland to the Middle Danube. It's a walking story. 
and his writing is like a hug. It's really just, it encompasses you and you just sit there basking in the sunlight of his words. They are just beautiful, beautifully written and uh, inspiring and th they transport you. And so I would recommend A Time of Gifts, Patrick Lee Firmer. This is one that I read earlier this year and I am going to reread it in December because, or maybe November, I don't know, maybe both. <laughs> it is about making a home and the, the things that she feels and thinks about and is thankful for. And, and then there are recipes and little stories to go with those recipes. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And I cannot wait to reread it. And it's so cozy. Um, she has, I'm, I'm gonna try to say her name, Tyra Ferre Bjorn. And she has more books out. This is the only one I own. But if I can find more, I may read more from her before the year is over, because <laughs> I really enjoyed this. Rain by Melissa Harrison. This is Four Walks in English Weather. And on the back, it gives you uh, some different types of rain that you might walk in. We have the basking rain, which is a drenching in a heavy shower. The dibble rain, which is slowly in tiny drops. And then we have the downpour which is sudden drops from a clear sky. And then we have the squall, which is half a gale. <laughs> uh, and then we have the drizzling rain, Hempel. Little observations and all the good reasons to, to walk in the rain and to not just stay inside and watch it but to get out in it and observe. And it's really wonderfully done. Melissa Harrison is a beautiful writer. And now for something completely different. <laughs> Anthropocene Reviewed. This is John Green's um, textualization of his podcast, The Anthropocene Review. And I highly recommend um, downloading the podcast, going clear back to the beginning, starting at the first episode and listening to these be told by him. This is the transcript of his podcast, but there is something to be said about John Green's voice his timing. I don't think I've ever come across one that is more than 15 minutes in total. And he tells at least two stories and reviews two different things um, per podcast. I would recommend listening um, as you read. There are so many really heartwarming, heartfelt moments. He tells you a story from his own life or from the life of someone that he knows. He draws it all together. You think, where is he going with this? And he pulls it back around and it's just fascinating and lovely and I enjoyed it so much. I have The Gentle Art of Domesticity and this is by Jane Brockett and it is Stitching, Baking, Nature, Art, and the Comforts of Home. And it just goes through all different kinds of things to create and different kinds of crafts that you can do to enhance the uh, mood of your home. 
and to make it into a place that you love to be and that others love to come to. And yeah, I really enjoy this, especially in the autumn and winter. And two that I do not have that I want to mention are Gladys Tabor writes books about her home of Still Meadow. It just, it, it's just beautifully written accounts of life at that day and age, in that time, and they are cozy and fun and like I said, beautifully written. So I would recommend just about any Gladys Tabor book. And then another one that I would recommend is May Sarton has a book called Plant Dreaming. Is that right? Plant Dreaming Deep. That's what it is. Plant Dreaming Deep. And May Sarton was looking for a house. And she um, basically wrote down everything that went on in the process of looking for a home, but she did it in a very authorial way. And it's beautiful. It is so beautiful. And when she finds the one, it becomes even more beautiful. There's something about a home and making it cozy, making it yours, sitting by the fireside, all of those kinds of things that just make me go, autumn, yes. So there's my recommendations for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know if there is something that you are wanting to pick up as a result of listening to me. And um, I would love to know if there are not very widely mentioned books that are not on this list that you find cozy that you want to recommend to me. I would love to know that. So tell me down in the comments. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. I will see you again soon. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to. Bye.